Welcome to the Back Checks Beers and Banter podcast, part of Hockey Hype Australia's podcast network. And I am joined by Andrew McDougal. I'm, of course, Gordon Good Enough. Andrew, what are three days in Melbourne? Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, GG. Um, yep. This is <laughs> this podcast has got off the electrifying start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we started recording and we, we've had a, a philosophy that we're not going to edit and my daughter Matilda uh, woke up uh, from her nap and was really not happy so that theory of, of not editing the podcast has just gone out the window <laughs> although technically we're not editing we're just re-recording yeah that's right yeah and I'm hoping but I'm we... actually ho- I'm hoping that this is going to sound a bit better than uh, separate rooms in in an Airbnb in off on Flinders <laughs> Street in Melbourne, <laughs> <laughs> next to the nightclub. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we the 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 shame is is that we said some really insightful stuff in the first recording um, of this podcast, and uh, I can't remember any of it, but I know it was really good. Um, so we'll just have to see how we go with this one, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. Uh, all I remember is that we had a joke about Kerry Goulet, um, uh, and that was uh, that was probably as insightful as we got. <laughs> yeah, but, but <laughs> we love, as we said, we love Kerry. Uh, we're we're trying to work out a time to hook up with Kerry and get on Gooch Live. Um, if you don't know Gooch Live, check it out. Um, Kerry does some awesome work with Gooch Live. Um, but yeah, he's a busy person, and we love him. Um, we had a joke before on the previous recording that we've scrapped <laughs> that uh yeah what did you say he's a bit like the tassie devil flies in flies yeah. out but um yeah he's good for hockey here and we love him he gives us a hug every time we see him and uh we'll set something up soon so um yeah yeah he's, he's got this good chaotic energy about him and you know <laughs> setting up times and and he gets so busy uh you know if you're not right in front of him uh you know you you <laughs> <laughs> you're you're lost. <laughs> so um no, we're we're looking forward to to seeing more uh, of Kerry. I love the content he was putting out too on his on his show, uh Gooch Live. Um he's really good friends with Phil Pritchard, uh Keeper of the Cup. Um he's got on his uh, Facebook page uh an, an, an interview with, with Phil Philip Pritchard. We also had a, a little bit of an interview with Philip Pritchard as well. Um uh, you can catch that on our socials uh how exciting was it to have the stanley cup in the southern hemisphere for the first time and how awesome were the lines of fans in all manner of jerseys to to get their photo with it yeah unreal i think it's the i think it's the best trophy slash cup in the world if you're talking about sports and and what you can win the stanley cup is unreal and to see it in person um, and to see the lines, we spoke about it on the other podcast, even after the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the lines were, you have to get there earlier as the lines start to, to build. Um, but just unreal cup. We, we, we did touch it um, because we feel like between us, the Leafs and the Flames, we're, we're not the reason that there's no, that we're cursed. So, but um, yeah, awesome. Um, I've got the family, uh, wife and daughter photo as well with the cup on uh yesterday on the sunday that was really cool awesome cup love it yeah um yeah no i i i think there's there's some conflicting feelings about whether or not uh you can touch the cup um uh, i i know graham hyde is probably listening uh coach of the perth inferno <laughs> and, and uh, he was pretty adamant that you don't touch it uh you don't touch something that you haven't earned um <clears throat> And you know, there's, there's, you know, I, I can see the, the logic in that. But when, when am I ever gonna touch the Stanley Cup, mate? Well, people probably say that about the Good All Cup too, you know. And I picked up the cup and kissed it when the Mustangs won because I felt like I earned the right to do that for, you know, all of the, all of the stuff that we do. So, everyone's got different opinions. Yeah, and you know you're part of the organization, and I think, um, you know, um, uh, an NHL perspective is, you know, I I remember when the when the LA Kings uh changed their kind of uh leadership group, and I was listening to a podcast. This is a few years ago about how, 
you know, they went through and, and they were like, you're important no matter what you do in the organization. Um, you know, you are an, an important piece of our Stanley Cup journey and and got that winning kind of mentality uh instilled and and it it takes it takes more than just the players on the ice to get success. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree with that stance too. I I was saying that to um when I was talking to John Ballick and stuff after the good old cut win that the Mustangs had and John agreed and people within the Mustangs agree as well. It's not just the players on the ice that that win the cup as everyone else involved, it gets the players onto the ice and and the club into the position. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, that's um that's our insights <laughs> for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, oh, did uh, I, I? I was just thinking before we're probably not off to a good start because it's called back check spears and banter, and I don't have a beer with me, so we're <laughs> we're two episodes in, and the beers have disappeared already. Yeah, well, you know, my my theory is um, I never expected us to be recording a second episode less than two days after we'd uh, <laughs> posted the, the first one. And my liver just cannot take this regularity of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of podcast. So um, there's there's no there's no beer today. I did. I did have I did have a coffee. I had to make this one myself. It wasn't made for me by the. Um, by the the wonderful people uh, below Rod Label <laughs> Arena in the media workroom, um, oh, but it, it's, oh, it's good coffee. Oh, oh. I just wanted to come on today because I've got I've got the Flames jersey on because we pumped the Canucks, so that's the yeah, ten nil. Um, <laughs> but um, the coffee. How many coffees did we have across the three <laughs> days? <laughs> so we we were trying to um, not not. Um, you know, get them to to be suspicious of us or, or notice. So, I'd go up and order two coffees, one for me, one for you. Then you'd go up and order two coffees, one for you, one for me. So I I think we managed we managed it all right. We we didn't get kicked out. Um, there were two guys making the coffees too, so you could kind of strategize that way. So you could get four times the coffees without really raising suspicion. So and the best yeah. thing about it was. When when Phil entered into the picture on Saturday and Sunday, we also had Phil that could go up and get us a coffee, so so <laughs> so so Phil could get the orders too. So it just it, it changed the whole ball game. Yeah, <laughs> Phil's not a coffee drinker either, so we didn't have to worry about you know him taking our coffees or any of that stuff. I was getting coffees and taking them up to Katie in the stands. So um, it was a it was a pretty good deal. It was a pretty good deal. We got we got our money's worth uh from the coffee alone. Um yeah. Yeah, definitely. We got um, looked after. The 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 media room and the spread of food and the the, the drinks and stuff. It's um like it, just sitting down there and I mentioned it to people um yesterday that you got players just walking through general managers walking through the media area. You can interact with them. When I went over to grab a coffee, uh, I looked over yesterday morning and the LA Kings players were down in the basement warming up. Most times they just kick a soccer ball around, but a few of them had an Aussie rules footy. They were trying to kick that down there warming up. Just really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to see, good to kind of, um, you know, be a part of that behind, behind the scenes and, and see what goes on. Uh, um, and to meet the other people involved, uh, not just the NHL reporters, but they had, for example, Bob Crawford, who, uh, you know, runs the press conferences. So he kind of, you know, you, you raise your hand, he points to you and it, it's all, it's all really well run. Uh, Chris as well, uh, War check. I think he was doing some work with the, with the media stuff as well with the NHL and, um, the, the guys at, um, at Bursty who were handling the media accreditation, um, big shout out to Xavier for uh, his assistance in getting us accreditation and Phil accreditation. Phil Phil Taylor, our photographer, he, he couldn't get a accreditation through IHJ or anywhere else, but um, but uh, we managed to get him through with us. So um, which we're very grateful for for his work and and grateful that that he got to have have the experience too. Yeah, he's um, the photos from Phil are unreal, and we'll we'll start pushing them out across. We've already started on Instagram, um, but due to the T's and C's of the NHL and to get Phil in, um, there's certain platforms that we can't 
directly post to, but we'll be creating galleries on our website, sharing the links to those galleries because the photos that Phil took, some of them are just unreal. Yeah. So he's got a, a sequence, uh, the Logan Cooley goal from that Saturday game. He's got a sequence of about a half dozen shots, which shows him, you know, um, deking around the player and, and putting the puck in the net as he's falling over. Um, we'll post that up um, soon, um, depending on how long it takes uh, to render uh, this podcast episode. It took 50 <laughs> hours for the first one, right? <laughs> It's ridiculous. And the first yeah. download, the first download didn't even work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so Doogie Doogie had his um had his has notebook open the whole time during the day as we're sitting in the stands during the game and he's counting down how many hours, some ridiculous <laughs> number of hours it was gonna take. It finally downloaded, but uh it, it wasn't it wasn't right. And then you had to do it again. Um, yeah, it was it wasn't the correct format, and I had to redo it. So I I got home Saturday night and I left it on overnight, and woke up Sunday morning and uh, <laughs> it was finally done. <laughs> <laughs> so you you've got your um your Calgary Flames jersey on. Yeah, um, I, I suppose I should tell people who aren't watching the video. I'm watching me get some cereal for my daughter, which is highly <laughs> exciting stuff. You can catch that on YouTube. Um, nah, it's good stuff, uh, right? It's good stuff. Yep. Uh, I, I put the cereal in first and then the milk. <laughs> I don't get people who put the milk in and then the cereal. I just, I don't get it. Who does that? Um, I've never, I've never heard of that before in my life. I've had that. I've had that. Really? Like I've seen, I've seen people um, doing that. Yeah, it's it's very unsettling. It's unsettling. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like watching a Leafs second round playoff game. You're like, what in the world is going on here? Um, but here we go. Let's see if there you go, Tilbo. <laughs> um, I'm wearing my Sydney Ice Dogs hat. Uh, I just because I I actually don't have any other. AIHL team hat. This is the only bucket I have uh, for an AIHL team. So, um, well, I was just going to say, I reckon Nathan Graham is probably listening. So, uh, Nathan, um, Gordon needs a needs a new hat. So, so I don't, um, I, I don't know if you can see this, um, but yeah, get him, get him a bear's on, hat or something. <laughs> on my notifications, on my notifications, <laughs> uh, I've just had. A missed call <laughs> from Nathan Graham. So there, there you go. His ears are burning. His ears yeah. are burning. Um, he knows that I've betrayed the, the franchise. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm going to tell him. I um, Nathan would be cool to get on here at some stage too. Yeah, I think I think Nathan would be happy to come on and look. We're we're not we're not after all the yeah. You know, the goss or, or scoops or whatever, but just an insight into things that happen. And there's lots of positive stories. Um, and Nathan is, I know you've, you've met him in person. Um, mm. I've obviously met him in person and still somehow keeps in contact with me for some <laughs> reason. Um, but um, he's just such a great guy, isn't he? Um, yeah. Good for hockey. Good for yeah, hockey. And I think, I think he likes a beer, so that's half the battle with this podcast. So, um, yeah. And talking about yeah. talk, talking about meeting a person, uh, I uh, met you for the first time on Friday uh, in person after all this time, and um, I, I was I was lucky enough to get welcome to uh, stay at the Airbnb on the Friday night. <laughs> And then you had an afterthought that <laughs> lucky I wasn't some sort of serial killer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we were we were concerned. Uh, no, no, but it, it, it's like um, Katie said, it's it's like like we we spent so so much time talking to each other, especially over the last couple of months. Mm. It's it's like we've known you for years. Um, so. No, it's, I'm glad you didn't turn out to be a serial killer, <laughs> uh, or at least that you took the weekend off. So, 
um you know thank you for that um but no it was great we we could um you know we went to the rink together on on the friday and the saturday um and then came came back home each day uh together as well um it was really cool it was really cool it was cool to do it um with someone else i think for me um and someone with a sense of direction <laughs> um so because i had no idea where we were going most times um i got to go to kmart with you on on the friday night that was, that was pretty sick. um so yeah yeah I, I got plenty of compliments about the get up that i had after going to kmart so i um i passed on your number um as my stylist so you might actually yeah. get some work you might actually get some work out of that <laughs> That'll be good. I'll finally get paid for something. <laughs> uh, awesome weekend though. Like we've got some stuff. Um, so now, now's the big test, I suppose. Now the NHL has gone. They've been here for a week. Now's the big test to see what this does for hockey here and how the powers of B can, can um, utilize the NHL being here to help the sport, help it grow especially from grassroots. That's my big thing. I want to see grassroots really kick off. Um, I like the idea of the street hockey that the Ice Hockey Australia had set up out in the fan zone. That's a really cool, cool thing to do to get people involved. Um, but we're, yeah, we got, we've got some more stories that we're going to have coming out at sort of a, from this weekend. So um, the guy from the door, at the Arizona Coyotes, the the Australian guy at the door. Um, what was his name, Gordon? Do you remember? Uh, I've, I've, I've yeah. gone blank. Uh, I I think it was Michael or something. Uh, just just a minute. I'm I'm gonna look him up because I've got him saved on my phone. Uh, so there's a yeah, Matt, Maddie Maddie Davis. Yeah, Maddie Davis, absolutely ripping person, and yeah. didn't know about hockey at all until the NHL came to town got the duties of man in the coyotes door downstairs um, where we were in the locker room um, went out and got a coyotes logo tattooed on the back of his calf. Um, so we're going to, we've, we've hooked up with, uh, with him to do a story down the track um, about the tattoo, about his experience at this, the global series. And um, you can talk about the other guy that you had a really good chat with, um, from Slovakia TV, but has got so many stories, Gordon. It's and we're gonna hook up with him as well. It's like we're coming out of this. Like even, even Pat, um, Pat Brown from the Coyotes media department, um, connected through um through Sarah Dora Marche. Um, we're gonna touch base and keep connected with Pat as well. Um, so there's heaps of things that have come out of this for us especially, but they're going to be cool stories that hockey fans can read. Yeah. So, so one of the things we'd like to do is, is kind of keep track of the coyotes and check in at various points of the season. So uh, I know Pat would, uh, he's, he said he's interested in, he'd be happy to come on the podcast. Um, so maybe we can do that in a few, in, you know, a couple of months time, uh, maybe, you know, uh, diff different points of the season all-star break or, or or whatever um but that would be great but yeah the guy that the guy that i you know just sitting next to and just was like just having a chat and introduced myself and hey who are you uh, you know kind of where are you from uh he, he does stuff for um sports slovakia and he was the personal translator for victor tikhanov for six years uh back in the back in the 80s and he's you know he's, he sent me some photos of him with you know he, he does a lot of tennis so with Nick Kyrgios Novak Djokovic and then a photo of him in Pele I mean you know what a guy mm. and he, he's he lives in Melbourne um he's he does a ton of stuff for sport and um yeah I, I, it, it's it's for me it's it's great um or amazing to think that we have these people with such a rich connection to the sport of ice hockey in our own backyard yeah 100 percent. yeah well, i sat next to him and i think it was his son his, uh, that was his son yeah. yeah so i sat next to him and his son during yesterday's game when gordon um just abandoned me um <laughs> for, for two periods <laughs> but um <laughs> gordon was running coffees up and down 
from the basement to uh, Rod Laver Arena. Um, but I sat I sat next to him, him and his son yesterday, and sort of had a bit of chat while the game was going and stuff like that. So yeah, it's awesome to have like you just don't realise that you've got these sort of caliber caliber of people that love ice hockey have been involved in ice hockey have a rich history and it's so many stories know all these people and they're on our doorstep yeah yeah um and you know he's he's you know been wanting to write about about the sport as well so he was excited to to meet us and uh connect with us and um you know just just chat some some local hockey so um so yeah look um keep an eye out for that content uh, I'll be doing a wrap up of the Sunday kind of game and press conferences, kind of the day experience, less less a, a game report than just a an overall kind of experience thing. Another sellout, you know, after thirteen thousand and ninety seven on um on Saturday, thirteen thousand one hundred and eighteen on on Sunday, um, fantastic for the game, uh, and you know another another good game, another another close game. And it was nice to see the Coyotes win one and the LA Kings win one. Um, Jordan Spence got a huge cheer. Uh, I know he doesn't remember anything about being born in Australia. He was like so young when he left, uh, but he was named the game's first star. Um, he, he got an, you know, an assist in both games. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for Jordan Spence. He's, he's a young talent Um he, he's represented Team Canada, I believe, and spent some time in Japan. Uh, so probably more more of a connection to those places, but we'll still try to claim him. Um, but yeah, all, all the best for him in, in his promising career. Well, people might um, people might sort of laugh about it that they had the big from Manly, New South Wales and all that sort of stuff. And he started in the starting lineup and got the first star at the end of the game. Did the interview during intermission um, on the bench, but when you when we spoke to Todd McClellan, I think it was Todd McClellan that gave a really good answer to it. We asked Andrew and Kempy as well about if they'd spoken to Jordan and his and if their feelings about the reception that Jordan got. But Todd McClellan, and it will come out in your piece, Gordon. But Todd McClellan gave a really good, insightful answer um, that Jordan actually knows. Um, that there's a bit of a responsibility there. Like even though he was only a couple of years old when he left here, he's still born here, still from here. Um, and it feels like Jordan's actually embraced that as well, which can only be a good thing for Australian hockey. If down the track, Jordan wants to continue to sort of help promote Australian hockey here. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I, th- I think Tom McClellan here, he also joked that, you know, if, if, if he had have had a smarter coach, uh, then he would have put put him out in the shootout earlier, but he was going to be he was going to be tipped if uh, if Arizona had have scored on on that last shootout attempt to tie it up. Next round, it would have been Jordan Spence going. Um, that would have been uh, unreal. But what a uh, what a, what a good guy Todd McClellan is. And one one thing too, I have to say, um, and we we spoke about it already, Doogie. The questions that we had, I mean, I. I'm biased. I, I thought that they were all good questions, a bit of a mix of, of you know, what this means locally for Australia, as, as well as, you know, uh, stuff to do with specifically their team and team and players. But the answers that we got, you know, you, there's a lot of jokes that hockey coaches are, and players are, give cliche uh, cliches as answers, right? But the answers that we got were really generous, well-considered comments and I really appreciated that. Well, I think they probably appreciated the fact that me and you were the only Australian media there for the chunk of it. When when we sat yeah. down for press conferences or the scrums, um, me and you were basically the only ones there that were Aussie media for the chunk of it. Um, so they, they probably appreciated the fact that, one, um, there was Aussie media there to ask questions, and two, we actually knew what we're talking about. We know the sport of hockey. Um, we're not just rolling in there with a little brief from Wikipedia to try and grab a snippet, um, f- you know, for, for TV or radio. We actually asked insightful questions about the team and um, Pierre-Luc Dubois or anyone like that. Um, so we actually got decent answers and they probably appreciated that as well. 
And we when we wanted yeah. to, and we wanted that was sort of an idea we, we'd spoken about. We wanted to bring it back to Australia because the other guys that that, that were there and, and the ladies that were there in the press conferences, like Craig um, Craig Morgan, um, terrific person. Um, I've connected with Craig on Twitter now. We follow each other. Uh, works for um, Phoenix Sports and NHL Network correspondent. Um, got chatting with Craig and and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, like they were asking, they were asking all those sort of team questions and things like that, that they sort of have a bit more of an idea because they're around these teams all the time. So we wanted to bring it back to more of an Australian sort of focus and what they thought of Australia and the junior clinics and things like that. Yeah. The the one thing which I was expecting, uh, I, I don't know why I, I was expecting this. Um, maybe, maybe it was a, an unrealistic expectation. Um, uh, I was expecting to have at least some representatives from Australian ice hockey um, making themselves available for media. So, for example, representatives of IHA or AIHL or, or, or whatever, just to be able to to uh, ask them questions, you know? Like, they, it's, it's not just the NHL that has um, organised this event in a vacuum. Uh, there's been collaboration and cooperation from from other people. So, um, yeah, I, I was just expecting to to be able to to speak to some other people, but that um, uh, maybe that will come up in the future. But um, yeah, it was it was uh, as you say, it was kind of um, uh, strange to be the only Aussie media in the room. It was like a, a massive responsibility, but also a massive a massive privilege. Uh, I I think um, yeah. We're probably we're probably the only unpaid media in the in the room anyway. Yeah, we're probably the yeah, we're yeah. probably the only volunteers in, in the room. <laughs> I mean, I was paid, um, so so you were the only unpaid. Um, <laughs> no, no, we were both unpaid, but we did get a scarf out of it, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yep, yep. I actually got two. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, one of one of them we opened up and it was all ripped. So so I was glad that <laughs> I was glad that I had the second one. So my daughter's got yeah. that. Um, yeah, she enjoyed she enjoyed um enjoyed the day yesterday. My daughter, she um mad soccer, but hockey's her second sport. So um yeah, had a really good time. Yeah, she seemed a little bit upset when you when you exchanged the the ripped one for her good one uh, for her good scarf, <laughs> but. But you know she's young; she'll probably forget about it. So you know, <laughs> just a power move. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one one uh, funny story that um, I think is worth sharing. We had a we had a uh, a chat with Maddie Armstrong um, at the he was he was running one of the <laughs> one of the areas of the NHL Global Fan Zone, and the announcer was just right there and was just kept on talking and talking. We didn't get a great interview uh, with, with him, unfortunately. Um, uh, but do you want to tell the story, Doogie, about how um, he he saw uh, Bill Armstrong at the at O'Brien Ice House? No, you can tell the story, but just on the announcer, oh, my God. I was going back through videos, and we did one with Jacob um, and Sheree. It was a Sherry, Sherry inside the ring. Yeah. And it's just, oh, <laughs> we needed one of those little microphones to make your life easier. But, you know, what can you do? <laughs> you can hardly hear Jacob talking. But anyway, you can tell the story yeah. with, um, with Army. But it's, uh, and, oh, the, other, the other thing with, before you tell the story, Gordon threw me under the bus with Army. Um, but there was redemption the next day, Gordon. So you weren't there. On the Sunday, you come a little bit later. You were there if you're doing stuff with your family for breakfast. Um, I was there with my family and uh, my mate Josh. And Army come up, actually walked across. He see me there, walked across, gave me a big, big uh, handshake, big cuddle, and uh, yeah, it's all good now. It's all love now. <laughs> <laughs> I set it up for you. So, so <laughs> when we initially approached Matt Armstrong, I, I said. You know, uh, you know, both of us are kind of nervous about, you know, uh, approaching people. It's I, I am not. People might may think I'm an extrovert. I am not an extrovert. It takes a lot of psyching up to actually approach people. Um, so you know, Doogie's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to ask anything or, or whatever. And 
I was like, okay, fine, I'll I'll do it. So I I my uh go to is humor, pretty bad humor probably. If um, but anyway, humor. So I just went up to Matt Armstrong and I said, oh, um, you know, Doogie said that I had to come and ask you um if you wanted to do an interview because because he said that you don't like him and and he he kind of got confused. He didn't get the the kind of the the deprecating humor. Um. He, go, oh, no, yeah, he goes. So, he goes. He goes. I don't even know this guy. <laughs> yeah, well, he does now. Uh, so he you know, you're now. welcome. Um, but no, we we had a chat with him, and then after our chat, um, you know, because we were just we were just talking with him, and he was great. You know, he, he just you know uh, he was so generous with his time. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. But he was talking about how they they um uh, they've had uh, at O'Brien Ice House. They'd had both teams there all week. And they're kind of sitting there on Friday and they're kind of deflated. They're like, oh, it's over, kind of like, you know, back to the everyday kind of stuff. And then the Coyotes obviously rock up because the the ice surface at Rod Laver uh, was in need of some attention. So they rock up to O'Brien Ice House. Bill Armstrong goes comes up to to you know Matt Armstrong and and just asks, Oh, is it possible to get a coffee? And and, and Matt's like, oh, I'm I'm an army too, mate. So yep, no worries, leave it with me. <laughs> Grabs a coffee, brings it back, and and is having a chat. And then and then asks them, uh, Bill, do you, do you mind? Would you mind having a look at my fantasy team? And Bill was like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll have a look. And Matty kind of apologized that he didn't have any Yokes players in the lineup, but showed it to him. He had a good look, a scroll through, and was like, yep, this is. This is an impressive, well balanced lineup. So, <laughs> if you need advice for your fantasy hockey team, um, Bill Armstrong is is your guy. Yeah, I, sorry, my cats are just blowing <laughs> down the hallway. <laughs> I don't know if they come through at all, but sick story, sick story. So yeah. everyone, so Bill Armstrong's DMs are going to be flooded now with um, fantasy tips. Yeah, yeah, um, no. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's pretty great. Thanks thanks for sharing that story, uh, Matt. If if you're listening, um, uh, and I'm very sorry for for the awkward in- introductions. Uh, I did that to a lot of people, just being yeah. really awkward. Um, we've yeah. got like a really awkward photo of Rob Blake. I don't know if you know the <laughs> Connor McDavid photo when he's like sandwiched between two people <laughs> in the airport, looking really awkward. That was that was Rob Blake uh, with <laughs> with Doogie and I. It was uh, it was great. Um, uh, we're we're kind of running out of time here, Doogie. But um, any um, any last things to to chat about? We've got a few minutes. Yeah, just quickly because um, I sort of felt like um, we sort of like the Coyotes really like we connected well with them when we were there. And um, just just Bill Armstrong, uh, I went up to Bill down in the media in the media room and just asked for a photo for our socials because I told him who we were all that sort of stuff. And then took the photo and he didn't just walk away. He had sat there and we had a bit of a quick chat to him and talked about hockey here and um, the potential and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really nice that Bill with everything that Bill's got going on as a GM of the Coyotes um, gave up his time um, to talk to us and take a photo. Yeah. He was giving, he was giving us advice on like, you know, strategy for rinks and, and all, all this kind of stuff. And which, which was, um yeah really lovely um of him so yeah shout out shout out to bill armstrong the whole organization just was class yep yeah absolutely yeah and i know at least one person who didn't have a hockey team before entering this this weekend um a friend of mine and he's now a coyotes fan so they've got at least one fan new fan um out of the trip yeah yep and um you know, I I think you look at you look at a team like the Coyotes, they may not finish as high in the standings as the Kings, um, this this season. That at least they're not tipped to. You know, anything can happen. Um, but you look at a goal like Logan Cooley's. That was the best goal I've ever seen live at a, at an NHL game. Um, you know, they they've got some young talent, Clayton Keller as as well, and um, they've added some good vets into the lineup. So, um, you know, you never know. Um, but uh, I, I think it, it's it's an exciting team to kind of, you know, to throw your your support behind. I think for the NHL, looking looking at this weekend, two sellout games, the merchandise. I think 
uh, I think they underestimated the merchandise needs because they pretty much sold out um, of all the merchandise. Um, it's It's got to be thought of as a home run for the league. Yeah, and I'll just leave it with one little thing is that there were talks and rumours uh, in amongst all the media and stuff that 2025 is a return date for the NHL. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll let people know if if we hear anything official, uh, but certainly it, it sounds it sounds pretty promising. Um, from what we heard, I think the it is like a three year deal with uh, Victor- the Victorian government. So if it does come back in twenty twenty five, it would be in in Victoria again. Uh, they might do it out uh, your way. Uh, do you need Geelong? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but uh, probably probably the same venue or or, or thereabouts. Um, but yeah, what a yeah, what what an event! What an event! Yeah, unreal, mate. And I'm um, yeah blessed to be able to do it with you. Um, spend time with your family as well. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome three days. Um, still pinching myself now that we've you know we've got this that accreditation badge forever. And um, we were down there in amongst it, just little hockey hype Australia, <laughs> two volunteer hockey fans that got the got the weekend of a lifetime. Yeah. And it was great to bump into, you know, other people that we've uh, worked with before, but haven't, haven't met. So Michaela Fellows, the AWHL commissioner, um, she was there as, as well and, and having a blast. And um, the AWHL season starts up uh, again next month. We'll be, we'll be doing our best to, to cover that. And um, we had a chat with uh, at the street hockey event uh, where you were trying to basically um, shoot, waist high shots at me all the time um we we had a chat with stephanie cochran and, and christine dutton um uh, about the the melbourne isis season um and that they're excited for the for the season and the the quality of the league that that is you know just on the on the up and up yeah yeah no it was a good chat it was yeah just awesome weekend um didn't yeah. want it to end didn't want it to end it's um it'd be yeah. awesome like, like we sort of spoke about imagine having that as the normal here in Australia. Yeah. And, and imagine, um, and this isn't a criticism. This is just a, a, um, a, a what if, but when, when you have that level of access available, it's so easy to cover the sport, right? It's, it's yep. just so easy to, to jump on and, and be able to write about it or, or uh, blog or vlog or whatever you like. So um, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we're running out of time, mate. Any any last words? That's no, not no, not really, mate. I've got. I'm just going to do like a column for Hockey Hot Australia, just about the NHL weekend and my thoughts and what I've seen. I've also got Liam Hughes piece coming out and um, the Mustangs um, goaltender in the good old cut run and Sarah Salmon's piece. I'll be sitting down with Sarah as well. So that's sort of what's coming from me. Yeah, and I've still got the Jason Quizler and the Sarah Dorromache uh, articles to come, and I'll do up a, a wrap up of of the weekend as well. Um, but yes, yeah, st- stay tuned. Exciting stuff. Follow us on socials at Hockey Hype AUS. Visit our website www.hockeyhypeaustralia.com.au. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, thank you for being a part of uh, hockey. Uh, what are you pointing for, mate? Hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Oh yeah, hit subscribe on on the YouTube. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and we'll we'll see you later. All right, peace.